The Battle of Kilmallock took place between 25 July and 5 August 1922 in County Limerick, Ireland. It was one of the largest engagements of the Irish Civil War. It consisted of ten days of fighting in the countryside round Kilmallock in County Limerick, in which Irish Free State Army forces, advancing south from Limerick City, found their path blocked by anti-treaty IRA troops, dug into a number of villages at Brough, Brewery, and Patrickswell. The fighting ended with the retreat of the anti-treaty fighters, and the occupation of Kilmallock by Free State forces. Chapter 1 – Preparations the prelude to the battle was the fall of Limerick City to Free State forces. The Republican forces in the city under Liam D.C. withdrew from their positions after a week's fighting and concentrated in Kilmallock and the nearby towns of Brough and Brewery. The Free State forces, advancing south from the city, found their path blocked by the Republicans dug in at the three hilltop towns. The National Army's attempt to break through this position produced the only line battle of the war with the two sides facing each other along clear front lines. The Kilmallock Brough Brewery Triangle would see some of the war's most intense fighting. Whereas in the fighting in Dublin, Limerick, and Waterford, Free State troops equipped with artillery overcame anti treaty resistance relatively easily, at Kilmallock they had a much harder time. The main reason for this was that the Free State troops, most of whom were new recruits, were facing some of the best of the IRA forces without an advantage in numbers or firepower. General Owen O'Duffy complained of shortage of arms and ammunition. He estimated that while his forces had about 1,300 rifles, the Republicans could muster over 2,000. He was also scathingly critical of the quality of the troops at his disposal, whom he described as, a disgruntled, undisciplined and cowardly crowd. The Republicans knew this and were confident of success. Nevertheless, the Republican commanders had their own problems. Logistical support and cooperation between forces from different counties was poor and unreliable. DC's command included volunteers from Limerick itself, Cork and Kerry, all of whom had their own commanders. They had three improvised armoured cars, some mortars and heavy machine guns but no artillery. O'Duffy drew up plans for the advance on Kilmallock with the assistance of his second-in-command Major General W. R. E. Murphy who had been a lieutenant colonel in World War I. His experience in the trenches had a major effect on his approach, predisposing him to cautious advances and use of trenches for cover. Chapter 2 – Battle the Irish Republic had the better of the first clashes. On Sunday 23 July, Free State forces took Brough and began their advance on Kilmallock, but were twice beaten back by determined Republican resistance. The following day, the Republicans managed to retake Brough in a counter-attack, taking 76 prisoners. As a result of this setback, O'Duffy called off the advance for the time being and waited for reinforcements. Free State forces quickly retook Brough after reinforcements arrived. However, things got worse for the National Army as the week went on. They made slow progress in taking the Republican strongpoints, and their casualties also mounted. On Tuesday 25 July, a unit of the Dublin Guard under Tom Flood was ambushed on a narrow road. They fought their way clear, but only after losing four men killed. Three more Free State soldiers were killed two days later. On 30 July, Major General Murphy launched an attack to take Brewery. The Dublin Guards attacked the town from the southeast, supported by armoured cars and an 18-pound field gun. The Republicans held out for five hours until Free State artillery was brought into action. At least 13 Free State soldiers and 9 anti-treaty fighters were killed in the action and more were wounded before the Free State troops secured Brewery. The Republican commander Deeney knew how important Brewery was to the defense of Kilmallock and drew up plans to recapture the town using three armored cars, trench mortars and machine guns. On 2 August, Republicans captured Patrickswell south of Limerick. The armored cars then attacked Brewery, taking free state forces by complete surprise. One car attacked Commandant Flood's headquarters at the railway hotel. 
The commandant and his men managed to escape out the back of the building under the cover of Lewis gun fire. The second armored car rammed the front door of another post in the schoolhouse, which persuaded the 25 troops inside to surrender. However when Free State reinforcements, along with armored cars arrived, the Republican counterattack stalled. The Free State reinforcements were led by Kunt. General Seamus Hogan, who personally led his forces, riding in the armored car nicknamed the Customs House. Having failed to secure the surrender of the town, Republican forces retreated. Chapter 3, The Tide Turns Against the Republicans Having held Brewery against a Republican counterattack, Free State forces prepared to capture Kilmallock itself, but anticipated there would be heavy fighting. Republican Adjutant General Con Maloney commented on the 2nd of August, up to yesterday we have had the best of the operations there. There will, I fear, be a big change there now as the enemy have been reinforced very considerably. In 3rd Western Division area they had all but disbanded, unwilling to fight free staters, destroy roads, and now discouraged by the Catholic Church. On Thursday 3rd of August, 2,000 men strong free state forces backed up by armored cars and artillery advanced on Kilmallock from Brewery, Dromen, and Bulgarden. 700 troops arrived the next day with an armored car and a field gun. By Saturday the town was surrounded by free state forces. The Dublin Guard were also on hand to prevent Republican forces from escaping. Three miles away Free State artillery was deployed and shelled Republican forces on Kilmallock Hill and Quarry Hill. The two hills were soon controlled by Free State forces. The National Army had, therefore, assembled overwhelming force to smother resistance at Kilmallock. They were still, however, expecting hard fighting before they took the town. To their surprise, when the Free State troops entered town, they encountered only light resistance from a Republican rearguard. Most of the Republican troops had already abandoned their positions and retreated to Charleville. They had departed not because the Free State troops were much stronger, but because they had been outflanked by Free State's seaborne landings on the coasts of County Kerry and County Cork on 2 and the 8th of August respectively. The landings in Cork and Kerry forced Cunt. General Deasy to release units from this area to return home to their own areas. Although the landings in Cork occurred after the retreat from Kilmallock, the subsequent loss of brigades from Cork added to Commandant General Deasy's problems. The final phase of the fighting in County Limerick came when the Free State advance south was held up at Newcastle Uist. Another day of heavy fighting ensued in which the government troops had to bring up armored cars and artillery to dislodge the Republicans, who were reported to have lost up to 12 men before they retreated in the direction of Cork. Chapter 4, Military Analysis The Republicans' battle plan, had not failed due to a lack of armaments, nor in the first instance an unwillingness to fight. However there was in the high command a real inability to accept that the war against the provisional government, was different from that with the British. Lynch was unprepared to draw up detailed instructions, in spite of urgent requests from O'Malley for orders. Maloney, for example, thought people would see that the National Army was not representing a legitimate free state. They refused to recognize that the Catholic Church were now, having been in favor of resistance against the British, standing for the state and a cessation of war. Men in Limerick and the western divisional areas lost the towns, only hanging on to mountainous hills looking west to the sea. Their soldiers refused to fight, went homewards, and would not dig up the roads nor disrupt communication lines. Lynch was frustrated, in his books, O'Malley blamed his lack of control as contrasting with Mulcahy's efficient logistics. In the end the Republicans were outnumbered, and by late 1922 were running low on ammunition, rifles, and explosives, artillery and armored cars. By contrast the Free State even acquired tanks.